these model railway layouts over the years and um, this is so easy and if you use all this expensive this is our, this is literally us learning as we go along um, because this is our first proper OO gauge layout it's our first proper layout and what we've discovered is it's changed as we've gone along so as I say this originally was not going to be a hillside we haven't done what you're supposed to do which is plan it all on paper make sure it all fits because the layout was bought the shape it was with the track where it was we've really had to look at it and make it up as we go along um, now in theory that shouldn't work because you'd have yeah, it's a bit hard for the cameraman to see this bit. In theory, that shouldn't work because we'd have lots of errors and mistakes. But actually, we haven't uh, found it too difficult doing it that way. One of the nice things we're working particularly with cardboard is that it's very easily to, if you've made something too big, cut it out and do it again. If you've made it too small, it's actually very easy to add something. Um, very easy to do anything with it and because you didn't pay very much for it you don't mind if it goes wrong and you have to do it again I'm just struggling a little bit there um, now what I'm conscious of with these big bits though is that we've only got one layer there so we will go over in a minute and add another one because we've got a hole there a big hole there haven't we um, so let's just put that on there. So I'm going to do now, you can see there the hill is more or less finished. I'm just going to do that last little end bit. That's going to be a bit tricky because we haven't put much um, padding there. So what I'm going to do, if the cameraman just stays there a minute, I'm just going to scrunch some newspaper up and shove in there. And then we're just going to cover that. as best we can. Bit of glue front and rear. And you can see I'm working really quite fast and I think that's probably quite important as well if you are making a railway with a, a child like I am or are you making it for a child or perhaps even you're making it for yourself because certainly I, I've seen railways online where people have taken years and years and years to build them which um, I know is part of the fun but uh, I'm a fairly I never really grew up from being a teenager I've got quite a short attention span and another one of our objectives was to get this layout finished by December to go to an exhibition was, that's right quite right so we are up against a bit of a time frame and certainly, as I say, I know as a modeler, I mean, I got, when I was a kid, um, I probably started more kits than I ever finished because I would run out, of in, I'd start them in a burst of enthusiasm um, and then not finish them because it hadn't kept my interest. I'd gone off and got interested in a different project. Um, fairly typical, you know, sort of teenager. And in fact, one of the reasons, one of the ways we've paid for this layout is me selling a lot of my old kits on eBay. And one of the reasons is some of the kits, particularly the bigger ones, would just take too long to build. And I know in my heart of hearts that what will happen is I'll lose interest in them. Now what you can see I'm doing here is just adding additional layers. Because certainly um, from what we found on the other hills, you do need quite a few layers to make this work. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time doing this and then we'll show you the gunk. Hill gunk. Hill gunk. <coughs> there we go. So as I say, hopefully you can see there, just need a bit of glue around the back here. Oh, that was my head. So I do want to just quickly go along, add some layers on this. Um, tear off a few of the loose bits. Where do we need some more? Let's go through here. Oh yeah, that's quite. It's quite interesting actually. It's, it's quite quick using big bits. 
but it does mean you only get one layer. Um, so I think it's worth then going over. I think if you had a big hill you could experiment which was the best way for you whether you do big bits and then go back and do another layer or you do lots of little bits as you go along so it becomes more multi-layered and then we're also hoping obviously this will give us quite a nice neat edge for the side of the layout you can tidy the board up because the nice thing with this hill is it means this side of the layout is going to be all urban so retaining walls and buildings and this is just going to be a country cutting for the trains to come through. I was explaining to Douglas earlier that one of the advantages of having a cutting when we're going to put trees and things on here if it had just been a wall and some um, ballast uh, it would, the train would appear to sort of fly through it quite quickly Whereas by putting trees and a bank and everything, it'll add to the illusion of distance and time, um, especially with the train running slower. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time. I know this is probably uh, not such great video to watch. 21 minutes so far. <laughs> but um, it's quite important that we get enough layers on this so that when it dries... And what I was thinking is, as this video is getting a bit long, if we we'll stop, stop in a minute doing and then we'll do the gunk as a separate one. Do the, no, do the gunk. Yeah, you could do the gunk in the same video or separate. Whichever but you like. Just stop doing this, show you the gunk, and then after the video, maybe do so a So if bit we more. stop there and I'll do some gunk, but as Douglas is saying, what we're actually going to do then after that is add some more layers. But as that's getting a bit boring, we will do gunk. So. Uh, what we've got in here is water. We're going to add this. This is uh, Modeler's Plaster. Now, I actually got this cheap in those sets you can get for children with a plastic mould and you can make a fairy or a horse or something daft like that. Um, these are actually out of horse ones. Yeah, we're going to end up a bit too much here. Um, got a bit too much water. Um, so this is quite a quick drying fine modelling plaster. You could use uh, polyfiller, that gives you a coarser texture or whatever you can get hold of. But as you know the, the spirit of our layout is very much to use what we've got. Um, so to make it this sort of greeny colour we add this sort there. of kiddies. And then this, camera, oh. this is sawdust. So this is from where I did some DIY and what I did was instead of when I swept up the sawdust instead of throwing it away um, I put it in, swept it up put it in a bag and this gives us some texture. Um, you're gonna, cameraman's going to have to pass me a bag of plaster I'm afraid. I haven't quite got Hollywood um, facilities here. This is going to make more than we need uh, which is a bit of a shame. So what we might have to do as well is um, cling film this and see, as an experiment, we'll see if it stays fresh. That's getting a bit better. Oh yeah, thank you, I've got that. The main reason we do a bit of green is so that if there are any areas that are left that we've missed, then obviously you'll have a green base to it, not, uh, not a white base. So I'm going to put a bit more in there actually. Well, we might not have mixed too much. It's, um, it's thickening up quite we well now about actually. about that to do roughly that. Yeah, it's thickening up quite nicely. You could add whatever colour paint you've got, but again, without wishing to sound a bit like a broken record, that is cheap Tesco's kiddies poster paints that were left over literally from probably five years ago when Douglas was uh, preschool. And my wife was very good and used to do a lot of arts and crafts with him. And you can buy that poster paint really quite cheaply. I'd be surprised if that was more than about 99p. And again, this is really saying, you know, when you come to do these projects, have a look through the cupboards, see what you've got before you start buying lots of expensive things. Um, more paint. It's quite interesting. I bought some coaches to do up uh, a, a project we did. We'll show you one day, 
and actually in the end ended up buying three, I paid three pound for the coaches and ended up buying three cans of paint, which came to four pound. So the, the paint came to more than the coaches. So you've got your gunk there. Oh, we've got to, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit more sawdust because that's not quite as coarse as the first lot. Um, I don't know if you haven't got any sawdust, if you haven't done anything, you, you don't have to use it. Um, I guess you could probably find another another product to put in there. I suppose you could use flour if you wanted to. Maybe. But certainly I, you know, or again, grit. talk to who you can scrounge stuff off. I know somebody who uses earth from his garden. So that's really great consistency. So literally, all we're doing is taking the gunk. Now you can see why we've got the track covered because it does go everywhere. And you've got to try and get it on quite thickly, which is a bit of a challenge. You want me to do it, because I did it last time on the big hill. Now if you know what you're doing, then hang on then, we're just going to switch, ca switch cameraman. There we go. Back of Douglas's head. Most people say that's my best side. There we go. And you don't think I've got lots of your head in my video? Yeah. So it does come on quite thicky. If you don't push hard and you just place it on, it actually works quite well. You need to make sure you cover the edges a little bit. And then it kind of gives it the sort of texture of a bit lumpy and bumpy everywhere, which is more natural, I suppose. Yeah, you can definitely see why we've got the track. Yeah, a big blob of that there. It doesn't come off very easily um, because it is this mix of plaster and uh, sawdust. Actually, we tried wiping it off and it just didn't want to know. And, um, yeah, should I be wearing my favourite top? Probably not. Uh, we did say to wear old clothes. Douglas is wearing his brand new favourite uh, weird fish top. Um, if the next time we're doing this video it's from the garden shed, it's because he got it all over his shirt and his mother and my wife have killed both of us <laughs> for not putting old clothes on. Does it does stick to itself a bit there as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, does, it really doesn't matter. We're not what we're trying to do here is, is go for an effect. Um, this is all about building a model railway layout fairly quickly and cheaply for a bit of fun. Not necessarily, you know, for, for high fidelity. Um, I noticed from looking at the magazines that there are the two kinds, and it's quite interesting. Yeah, you just need to get in that bit, and then you've missed a Should bit. Should I be doing this? Uh, no, that's wall. So it's just that top bit. That's it. Just there, that's fine. And then you've got this end to do, if you have a look. Mm -hmm. Absolutely goes everywhere. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then we're going to come down and do this end. And now there won't be much left over, fortunately. No. I think you might just have got them extra right. We've probably just got enough plaster and everything left then to do the last hill. This shot shows you quite nicely the thick cardboard that we've made. Um, you can use the thinner cardboard, but this 10 mil is quite a revelation. I've got a, a project in my head at some point to actually try building a baseboard out of it because it is very strong. And, and you, you can, can actually fit track fixing pins into it easier. And you can easier. fit track fixing pins. And you can see the supports there for the hill. It's a bit of a revolting green, but as I say, it's the colour paint we had available. It looks so like mint air, though. It does, doesn't it? So you got that's more or less it. Perfect. Okay. Have you got some left? Yeah, I've got quite a bit. Right, do you want to do some? Do another layer on the top hill? On the top hill. Could do. Up here. Or is that going to be a bit obvious? I think. Little. I think we just have to see if we can save that. Yeah. So that then is the three stages of doing a hill. Um, I'll go in a minute now and add some other layers to that one. Um, but in that one shot there, you can see what we've done. A little bit of a. That's what we're aiming for there. That's the windmill base with the hut, and then there's going to be a dirt track going down. But this is going to be quite a nice rural wooded area now. So that's it, that's uh, very nearly half an hour uh, and hopefully that shows you what you need to know. And as I say, how easy it is. Uh, we've never done this before um, and one of us is 10 and we've still got uh, quite a good result, I think, especially when it's finished.